Welcome to this month's Coffee Break webinar. My name is Anatoly. Today I'll be exploring the auto revisioning feature in i2 Costex with respect to how it can help when a new set of drawings is received, which requires updating measurement as well as estimate items. Before we jump in, let's chat about i2 Costex at a high level. i2 Costex is our feature software that comes in a host of different options with different functionalities. Moving from simple 2D takeoff on the very right in the blue column to the pink column adding 3D functionality to the green, which is comprised of 2D takeoff package as well as estimating components. And finally, to the full feature in the black column. If you're new to Costex, you may be asking why you would need Costex. At its core, I2 Costex is a measurement tool, both from 2D and 3D. All these tools are integrated into our estimating component. An auto revisioning function, which we will cover today, allows the estimator to handle revisions in takeoff, which is live linked to the estimate. With these live linked quantities, Revisioning helps to automate the process when new drawings are received and makes estimating with revisions a lot more streamlined than duplicating your estimates and starting your takeoff from scratch every time. In addition, a report writer is integrated in the solution, allowing reporting from within the program where you can output marked up drawings and customize estimate reports or bills of quantities. Finally, i2 Costex is a paperless estimating solution that in a network client configuration allows you to work on the same project within your team. Costex is interoperable and compatible with a whole host of different solutions. From an input point of view, we support over 20 different file types. For example, from JPEGs to PDFs, DWGs, uh, native Revit, IFC, and DWFX files. All these can be brought into i2 Costex, which is a database environment. And with that, some of the export options include PDF or Excel, as well as an open API, such that you can link and integrate Costex with other software, which you may be using. We also offer integration with our conceptual estimating software, i2 Benchmark, which allows you to import your estimate and benchmark against historical data or produce a conceptual estimate from scratch on your existing project library. Let's have a quick look at the topics we're going to cover today. Building revisions. As you can see, this is where it's oriented in the user interface by the arrow. Drawing revisions. Revising dimensions. Workbook revisions. And then we'll finish off with an undo of an accidental revision. Let's begin by exploring creating a building revision. Navigating to the revisions tab in Costax, we'll begin with this section here. Before I proceed, I just want to note that I have completed all the takeoff for this particular revision. And let's note that the estimate is coming in at 19.4 million. Let's now proceed with adding the new revision, which in this case is a change to the ground floor plan. The way to proceed is to click on the add button, create a name, and then add any pertinent notes. I'll leave the settings here as their default. When I click on insert, Costex creates a new revision. This can be seen in this dropdown, preserving the initial revision, locking in all the drawings as well as the estimate, allowing you to have a reference to these as you move forward in the second revision and so on. Let's continue on with drawing revisions. Now that we've created a revision, notice the locks that have appeared next to each drawing in my drawing set. This indicates that we now have to go through our existing set and promote a drawing, meaning that we choose a new drawing. And for instance, in this case, we know that our ground floor plan has changed. 
or bulk promote drawings which have no changes and can be brought from the previous revision into the current revision without any changes. We'll then cover an accidental deletion where you can restore a previous drawing. So let's go ahead and promote this ground floor plan to the new drawing. I'm going to leave these defaults as is, but if you needed to change your scaling, that could be accomplished here. Notice that the drawing comes in on its side. I can change that by rotating it here. Now, I know that my ground floor plan has been updated, but the remainder of my drawings are not going to change. And this is where I can use my bulk promote feature, which enumerates all those drawings here. And when I click OK, it simply allows them to pass through the previous revision into the current revision and notice that the locks are disappearing, meaning that we've accepted them and they're going to um, proceed into this revision with no change. Notice though that this particular drawing has in fact been revised and there is a, a warning symbol here indicating that Costex has flagged some of her measurements. And if you expand those, you could see those warning signs here for review, which means that we must check our dimensions and approve or revise them as needed. So before we proceed in doing that, we will demonstrate the use of the restore previous function. Let's just say I accidentally deleted this drawing. Restore previous would allow me to bring back any drawing that had been deleted from the previous revision, as I have here. Mind you, it has brought the previous revision of that drawing back. And so I would have to once more promote that drawing accordingly and choose the correct drawing. So this allows you to bring something back if it had been accidentally deleted. Now, we can also explore the compare drawings option where we'll compare the ground floor plan of the uh, second set with the first, and we're going to choose match lines because these are vector-based drawings that we're comparing. And what you could see here is the overlay with the red indicating the old and the green indicating the new. And notice that the overlay shows that there's an offset which we'll cover next. And it can happen that from revision to revision, uh, there are some slight differences in the drawing and that you may have to move your takeoff before you can proceed with uh, the corrections. So let's go ahead and close our comparison and explore offsetting our takeoff such that it then lines up with the current drawing as it is now. Notice as I've selected my dimension group, the offset buttons have appeared and are now available to me. I'm going to zoom in, click on the offset position button, click on this takeoff and start to move it into an anchored position relative to where the new drawing sits. Notice that I have now changed my takeoff for one dimension group, but when I select a single dimension group, it automatically moves all other dimension groups relative to where I've anchored that initial dimension group, such that all my takeoff lines up more or less with the new drawing. In addition, you may want to explore 
the offset rotation function, which allows you to rotate by preset amount or manually in free form. Or alternatively, if you're not satisfied with your current offset, you can reset your offsetting, which would take all the dimension groups. For instance, if I switch back to my GFA here and bring them back to their original relative position, allowing you to once more select offset, click on that dimension group, and once more bring it to a, an anchor point of your choice. Let's continue on with revising dimensions. Now that we've lined up our takeoff, we need to validate it. Moving over to the drawings pane, we can see that this drawing has a warning symbol next to it, meaning that there are dimensions that need to be revised or checked in simple terms. Down in the dimension groups tab, we can explore all those dimension groups and notice that they're fairly interspersed with dimension groups that have no warning. In order to help us isolate just those dimension groups that need to be reviewed, we can use the unrevised filter button, which isolates just those dimension groups, which Costex deems to need our uh, attention. So let's go ahead and start working with the GFA. Having moved my GFA into position, I'm fairly certain that it should line up with the vectors in place. One way to quickly let Costex take care of the match work is to select the dimension group as we have here, and then use the best match all button, essentially allowing Costex to take care of looking at the invalid dimensions that yellow highlight and trying to match things up to the existing vector lines. Notice that it did a pretty decent job, except for this part here where it's made a mistake and I just have to correct it and bring it out. Notice that the hatching has now changed to the original color of the dimension group, which is green, and that the lines, the vectors representing that area takeoff are also green, meaning that we have matched up with the vector lines of the drawing, and I can click on accept all to accept this dimension group and validate it in this revision. Notice that the GFA folder is now empty as that dimension group has now been validated. We can proceed similarly for all the functional takeoff in this um, drawing. So let's go ahead and click on administration, for instance, and click on best match all it automatically snaps to that geometry and allows me to move on with my validation and notice how all these items um, disappear as I move through and validate them. So notice that Costex has attempted to do a vector line match, but it simply wasn't the first time. There was an error here. And now that that hatching is as it should be, I can click on accept and move on with my dimension group validation. Now, as I proceed through these items, it may happen that you're zoomed into a, a particular corner of this plan and may not know where your takeoff is. A nice shortcut is to use the space button, which immediately points you to where those dimension groups uh, or dimensions rather are located. Now let's go ahead and move through these instruction uh, rooms. If I click on best match all, notice that it has automatically adjusted for these rooms, but uh, was unable to correctly take off this room. And that's probably because of these columns and these cutouts. So what you could do is simply delete that room and using the polylines functionality in Costex, go ahead and take that off yourself and accept all dimensions and continue on. Another useful feature 
let's just say if I made a mistake, let's go ahead and best match all these electrical rooms and accept them. If I'm not satisfied with what I've accepted, I can use restore mode and bring back a single dimension by clicking, right clicking over it and selecting that dimension or restoring all of them, bringing them into that initial state for you to review again. One final function is if you're simply not satisfied with what you have on screen and these dimensions being flagged as invalid, you can select the delete all invalid function, delete these, it says three dimension groups, so let's zoom out to address them all. And then simply go through and take them off as needed yourself. Let's go ahead and move into workbook revisions. Now that we've completed most of our uh, takeoff review, notice that our workbook is currently locked and we are at 19.4 million, just as we had seen that uh, at the beginning of the video. Let's now finalize our final piece of uh, dimension group review. I've left the exterior deck. Uh, I'd like to demonstrate the ability to revise this rectangular shape from revision one into this more curved structure. Costex supports the ability to attach to that vector and finish that takeoff and revise it. Notice that the hatching is now green and I can go ahead and accept that final dimension group. I no longer have a warning symbol up here against my drawings, meaning that I've taken care of all my dimension group review. And we can proceed now to the workbook. Notice we're still at 19.4 million, and that is simply because our workbook has not been promoted into this revision, which is revision two. What I will do now is click on promote the workbook, and what you should see is a recalculation bringing our revision into the updated takeoff that now reflects this new price. Now, just as before, if for instance, we accidentally delete this workbook from our second revision, the restore previous button can help out here. If I click on that, I can dig back into the previous revision and restore that estimate. Notice that 19.436 still locked. I now have to click on promote, which will bring in the updated quantities from our dimension groups and bring that budget from 19436 to 19448. The final piece here in workbook revisions is to be able to create some sort of comparison and that's where the custom reports come in. And let's demonstrate a comparison of this current revision with the previous revision and note those changes. So opening up my reports, and navigate to my estimate comparison to level and click on generate. This is an out of the box report available. And notice that the report produces a cover page, a summary, address, addressing those specific items in the estimate at a high level um, with significant changes noted by these arrows in the variance column, comparing the current amount and the previous amount. Now let's just go ahead and click on partitions and doors. What this report does is shows you the positive or negative addition or deduction in uh, dimension groups, the associated rate, and that final variance. So this report specifically addressing those items that have changed in the report, bringing your budget either up in the case of partitions and doors or down in the case of finishes. 
let's conclude with uh, what happens when you create an accidental revision and what's currently possible um, in Costex. So let's go ahead and create that accidental revision. Let's just call it revision three for now. I'm going to leave the defaults as they are. So notice that now we have three in this list and this was unintentional. So what ends up happening is Costex go into, goes into revision mode, uh, locks the workbook, uh, locks all the associated drawings and essentially you, go, you have to go through that process again, except in this case, it was accidental and uh, unwanted. So there isn't an actual undo for this. And uh, the first method that we're going to cover is to simply promote all the drawings and workbooks without any changes. And we'll just rename the uh, revision in such a way as to uh, say that the, uh, the previous one will not be used. And then this third one will be the actual uh, and current revision. So we'll just go ahead and go through that by bulk promoting all our drawings. So meaning we're bringing all the drawings from the previous revision into the next revision without any changes at all. And as Costex is going through that right now, you'll notice all the locks disappearing from the, uh, from the plans. So dimensions should not be affected either. So we will not be going through that uh, review process and notice that they're all here. Uh, the next piece is, of course, to go ahead and promote the workbook, essentially bringing it into the current revision. And now the next logical step is we want to address this revision and uh, rename these two accordingly. So basically, we would say revision two here. And then for this particular revision, we're going to load that up we're going to give it a name that's appropriate. Let's just call it not used or not applicable, whichever works. And now it creates this uh, very clearly defined uh, revision that was not used. And this is the revision to actual, so to speak. And then you can continue on with your work. Now, there is a, another approach that you might take, which is creating a new project based on a particular revision of this project. So let's just say um, I'd like to undo this revision and uh, bring, it, bring it back to a revision of my choice. So the word undo is a little bit of a misnomer. What we're actually going to do is create a new project and select a revision uh, on which that new project will be based. So let's go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and click new. I'm going to create a new building. Let's just call it uh, test revision. You can fill out a building code as necessary. I then need to identify where my new uh, building will go, which project in this case, it's my demo folder. And then uh, the critical component is let's select that uh, project and that building that I want to uh, reference. So notice uh, now I've got access to those three revisions that I have, the initial Rev2 not applicable and Rev2 actual. So what Costex allows you to do is to create a new project and select a particular revision on which that project should be based. So in this case, <clears throat> let's just say I, uh, I want to return to the initial revision or uh, if I wanted to go to revision two, for instance, what will happen is I'm going to select use drawings. And when I click insert, that new project will be created and will now contain all the drawings, all the takeoff, However, that revision now turns into the initial revision for this new project. So it's, uh, it's not exactly an undo. You're essentially selecting a particular revision, which you will reference for this, uh, this new project. So really just two ways of, um, 
uh, of correcting this. And I think the way that probably makes the most sense uh, at this juncture is to just identify that accidental uh, accidental revision uh, and um, and bring that new revision uh, into the current state and um, just maintain this, let's call this chain of custody as it is here. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you for joining us uh, for this round of Coffee Break webinar.